to look into the book of Acts quickly. Um, we need to, right, as we stopped um, in Acts chapter 18, uh, where Paul is uh, defending, um, you know, uh, about him, you know, in before uh, Proconsul Galileo, that's what we looked at. We also looked at his ministry in Corinth. Now, meanwhile, you know, uh, according to the timing, you know, we see that uh, Paul writes this first in Thessalonians, second Thessalonians, uh, these two letters uh, after Galatians, these were the letters that Paul wrote. And uh, so the, uh, we need to spend, uh, maybe uh, we are not going to spend, uh, the, you know, there's no detailed explanations, but uh, some information about uh, Thessalonica. We already discussed some of them. The city of Thessalonica location. Thessalonica uh, was a large seaport at the northernmost point of Thermai Gulf. Right? Thermai Gulf. The name of an earlier town at that place right, was Therma or Therme. Uh, why? You look at that word thermodynamics, you know, thermodynamics, Therma. Heat may have been derived from the warm mineral springs in the vicinity. So Thessalonica was a city one time was so famous for warm springs. Maybe because the springs comes through the uh, maybe some kind of uh, volcano you know, uh, near si or side of the volcano, there could be a reason. Now, uh, Thessalonica, uh, the modern name is Salonica, right? Salonica, that is the modern uh, name, was founded in 315 BC by the Macedonian general Cassander. Cassander was the one who founded this uh, city, who enlarged and strengthened the original city, right? Enlarged, you know, strengthened the original city. So um, it was a different name before. Now uh, he is the one who developed. He named it for his wife, right? His wife's name was Thessalonica or Thessalonica. That is his wife's name. So the Therma or Therme is changed into Thessalonica now. This Thessalonica was also half sister of Alexander the Great, right? Alexander, you know Alexander the Great, one of the great emperor, right? In the um, Greek um, empire. Prominence. It was the largest and most important city in Macedonia. The capital of the province with the population possibly one or two hundred thousand. Right? Like two hundred thousand people were there. There uh, living. And it was an important city for trade because it was at the junction. It was at the junction of the great Ignatian Way. And the road leading to north of Danube. So it was like a, a trade route connected to Thessalonica. And therefore, people are living, a lot of people coming and going. Uh, it was a big city in the ancient time. And political status. Um, yes, in 42 BC, Thessalonica became a free city. Right? What is a free city? It was able to govern all its own internal affairs doesn't have to get the consent from Rome, right? They, they elected officials and they were called as politarchs, politarchs, right? Those elected officials were called as politarchs or politicians, maybe. Yes. So that's the political status. Now, inhabitants. Majority of the people were Greeks. With the sprinkling of Romans and some other Orientals, other Europeans were also there. There was also a large Jewish population. That is, that makes Paul to go. And a synagogue 
so in Thessalonica. Uh, the church uh, was found in AD 50 by Paul on his second missionary journey. You read about that in Acts 17. We already discussed about that, right? Second missionary journey. He preached in the synagogue for three consecutive Sabbaths, that is three weeks. Church had Jewish people, God-fearers, women, even Gentiles. So it was a mixed. The church at Thessalonica was a mixed people. Like some Jewish people who trusted Christ came, some Gentiles who were part of Jewish system came to the church. Some Gentiles directly from Gentiles' background came. Length of stay. Some say a little as three weeks, as Acts seems to indicate that Paul stayed in Thessalonica. However, this is probably on his synagogue ministry. As indicated earlier, there are good reasons for believing that Paul was in Thessalonica for a longer period of time, perhaps several months. Paul was there. All right? So that is the background. Now the place of writing. Both the pieces were written from Corinth. Yeah, first and Thessalon second Thessalonic Thessalonians written from Corinth. Yes, this has been shown from ex examination of Paul's itinerary. If you look at like his travel itinerary, then you will see. Paul, right, from Thessalonica, Paul and Silas went to Berea. Timothy was either with them or joined at Berea. Yes. Then Paul went to Athens while Silas and Timothy remained in Berea. Right. Paul went to Athens, we see. Third, Silas and Timothy rejoined Paul at Athens again. So there are some time Paul goes alone. He leaves them. Maybe there is something to take care. Then again, it goes back. And Timothy was sent to Thessalonica. Silas was sent to Macedonia and possibly to Philippi. Then we see in his travel itinerary, Paul went to Corinth and was joined by Timothy and Silas. That is given in the First Thessalonians chapter 3. For you know, Paul wrote First Thessalonians from Corinth shortly after Timothy's return. So Timothy joined, uh, you know, uh, joined by Timothy and Silas in Corinth. Uh, so that we see. So after Timothy coming back for Lord, Timothy and Silas, Silas were with Paul in Corinth at this time. And both are mentioned in the salutation of each letter to Thessalonians. That's how you understand. Second Thessalonians was probably written from Corinth about six months later. All right, how many months later? Six or six, uh, six months later, uh, after the first letter was written. And the situation in Thessalonica was the same as his writing. So the date is given there, quite a, about, about around AD 50. So church began like in the early 30s, right? And so after 20 years, uh, are over, Paul writes this letter to Thessalonica. Occasion and purpose. This is the most important thing in this one. Right? What is the occasion and purpose of First and Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians? First Thessalonians. Paul was writing in response to the report he received from Timothy. He tells that here. There was a report Timothy brought to Paul while they were in Corinth. His purpose was to thank God for the church. Then he wants to answer false insinuations against himself and associates. Some people said, Paul is not an apostle, an holy man. Third, he also wrote to encourage proper Christian conduct because there were some people who were dying uh, and they don't know what to do, how to behave. So he invites them to comfort, to enrage about people who die. 
against Second Thessalonians. After writing the first epistle, Paul received a further word about the condition of the church through some unknown channel. <laughs> right. Apparently, the persecution of the Christians had grown worse. And they were being convinced by pseudo Pauline letter or a false representation that end time was already present. Yes. Some, that is what the commentators say. Maybe there was somebody who wrote a letter to them saying that Christ is going to, the, the end is now. End is now. Somebody said, Paul wrote like that. So he wants to say, no, 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 I did not. That's not the way. He explains that. This was led to give up their work responsibilities even more than at the time of First Thessalonians. So what, what happened? They stopped working. Because if the end is well, so near, why should we work? Like some Jehovah Witnesses and other groups do did in the history. Right? Most of the cults did that in the history. Paul wrote to Corinthians, no, Paul wrote to uh, engage them in the midst of their persecution to clarify events surrounding the day of the Lord and engage a proper Christian conduct. You need to work. You need to do your part. Don't simply wait and say, oh, Lord is coming. Let me sit free. Don't do that. That is what Paul was saying. 